Dr. Matt here and today I'm going to talk about bone broth because of course that's another fad that's out there nowadays. It's become super popular and I'm not convinced that the research really backs up its use. So I actually searched for bone broth specifically on PubMed and there were eight articles that came up. Two of them are, are kind of irrelevant to the question here because one is on production methods, one was on microbial content. Those are largely irrelevant to the health benefits that are proposed. Now, two of them actually looked at rodent studies. So they were looking at uh, bone broth used in, say, rats or, or mice, and, and that's also irrelevant to human health. Now, two of them looked at mineral content. So they were looking at, say, calcium content, magnesium content, and these other minerals, and they actually found that it's a poor source of those minerals, of calcium and magnesium, which is funny enough because calcium is something that people want to eat bone broth for. And it was high in lead, and lead is very toxic. We don't want too much lead, it's a very bad thing, and in some cases it actually exceeded what is considered um, suitable for our water supply, as far as lead goes. So uh, not gonna be a good thing to consume on that level. And then there was one study looking at um, its use in humans, but it was actually looking at collagen supplements versus non-collagen supplements, and both groups ended up getting bone broth. So you aren't actually comparing bone broth versus no bone broth. So it tells us nothing about bone broth as a whole. And then the last one was looking at the actual um, collagen or the number of collagen precursors within bone broth. So these are the amino acids and it was a poor source. So not good at all. Now, that's all the research on, on, on bone broth, at least I thought so, until I searched bone soup. <laughs> and then I got six more articles. Again, a few of them were irrelevant to the health claims, but they actually had some pretty scary case studies. And case studies are when you look at an individual person and, and some uh, you know, experiences that they had with a given product. And there was severe vomiting after drinking bone uh, soup daily. So this is more of a long-term buildup of maybe some of the toxic elements that they had in there and um, ultimately not a great source of nutrition. They found that if you, if you cook it for an extra long period of time under acidic conditions, you can increase the calcium content of the bone soup or bone broth a little bit. Again, not really super relevant. Why not just eat some tofu or have some fortified plant milk or eat some broccoli you know, for your calcium that way instead. So that's really all there is about bone broth as far as the scientific literature goes. Whenever somebody makes a health claim around bone broth, you can absolutely be confident that it is not based on actual evidence. It is simply an anecdote. It's a preference. It's a personal bias on their part. Um, and they're likely trying to sell some kind of a program. I know some of my patients have gone through this before where they're adopting a nutrition program through say a, a doctor they had seen in the past and they're really heavily promoting bone broth, even going so far as to say, if they don't consume bone broth, they can't complete the program or they won't get their results. My question would be, where is that science coming from or where are those recommendations coming from? Because it clearly is not from the available scientific literature. So there you have it. That's all there is on bone broth. Hopefully I've squashed that myth for you.